Right, three weeks ago, I presented Dan Lloyd from GCN with a training plan as he prepares to take on his first half marathon. And you can join along with Dan as well. You can find that training plan that I have designed myself for Dan in the description below this video. It does come as a slight warning because I have designed this training plan for someone with a bit of running experience. I mean, Dan, after all, is rather ambitiously and quite impressively going after the sub 90 half marathon. So yeah, it's about time when it caught up and we're three weeks on into this training program now. So I'm eager to find out how he's finding it, if he's got any questions. I also want to give him a few tips as well. And I'm actually going to go and join him for a run session to see just how he's getting on. Uh, it is 10 past seven in the evening. I've been at the office all day. Uh, home now, and I've got company. Hello. We're wrapped up because it is blooming freezing today. Uh, there you go. It says minus one feels like minus six. So gloves are on. Gloves will be off in nine weeks time though. Is that better? Probably not, probably looks scary. Uh, you know when I said it feels like minus six outside? They weren't wrong. But that's the great thing about running, isn't it? You soon warm up, even when it's bitterly cold outside with not that much on. I'm in shorts, actually. Showing off my skinny white legs. Um, but yeah, six kilometers done, just over six and a half, actually. And uh, all the hill intervals done as well. Start as you mean to go on. Eight weeks, six days to go. Uh, well, Drew's going to come out for 2Ks today. I've got 8Ks easy to do because his football club have given him challenges and the rest of the kids there. Uh, their fastest 1K, their fastest 2K and their fastest 5K. So we're going to start today with the fastest 2. Then he's going to come back and play Fortnite. Yeah. Here you go. He's halfway through, he's doing well. I say it's very nice to be out when it's light. I've done a lot of running in the dark over the last few months. And it's also very nice to have a coach, Mark, tell you to go easy. Well, it is for me. I tend to just go out and then push myself and see how fast I feel comfortable doing that day. But when somebody's just told you to take it easy, it's what you do, obey. So yeah, oh, I've got a bit, I've got a bit over exuberant on camera. 445 k's. Well, I'm pretty comfortable. I'm finding them re reasonably easy at the moment. 440 to five minute k's. So I don't feel like I'm breathing too hard, and hopefully things will improve from here even more. Otherwise, I won't break my goal. That's coming out on the GoPro. Picturesque, not with my face in it. Uh, yeah, I brought day three forward because I'm supposed to have rest days today, but um, I'm rather stacked with work and other things tomorrow. So in consultation with Coach Mark, day three, a day early, rest day then tomorrow. So all good. 8K is easy again. It's cold again, but uh, Pretty enjoyable when it's like this with the sun out. Got a smile on my face. I'm just within work hours, so keep it quiet again, okay? Cheers. Right, we're about to start a run session. Um, to join Dan for his Tuesday interval workout. So we've got three, oh sorry, one, two, three, two, one, two, three. Minutes of equal recovery is all at kind of 5k pace, so pretty spicy one for today. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm alright at the moment. We haven't started yet. In uh, 70 metres, we will. Okay, you call it in. Right, 
first wrap down. Go for 340 three pace, is that right? Yeah, roughly, I think. Yeah. Go! Right, short recovery now. And see the final two minute and three minute effort. So, this is where it all really bite. I don't want the camera to be on it though, which is good for you. <laughs> also means I've been pushing hard enough. Right, we're going in 15 seconds. How was that then, mate? Oh, it's definitely the hardest session so far. Uh, my aim throughout was to really pick it up in the last minute of the last interval. <laughs> I picked it up a bit in the last 30 seconds, but... Oh, it's good, you're flying. I didn't have much left, which is obviously the aim on actual 5k. Whether that's the aim on this session, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, like... I expect you to be pretty fatigued by the end of this and almost pushing it to finish that final rep. So yeah. I'd say job well done. Nice one. Brilliant run, mate. Another one ticked off. <laughs> I'm happy. I've got to say, I'm super impressed with how you're doing. What I can see so far, you, you've hit that every session, right? I have, but this is what I said to you at the very beginning that I knew I was going to enjoy was just the fact that I had a training plan to be able to tick stuff off. I found it so much easier getting out the door and just looking at the start of the week, knowing what I've got to do every single day, knowing what I've got to do nine, now seven weeks in advance. That, that I find much easier than what I have been doing, which was contemplating during my day whether I was going to go for a run. And then if I did get myself out, contemplating how far I was going to go and how far. So it's been, I've really enjoyed it, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah like I say, I was super impressed and brilliant run session just now. now have you got any questions for me or perhaps any issues? You yeah, think? two. First one is, on Strava, I've been having a few comments saying that um, my easy parts of my run are perhaps a little bit too hard. I've been getting like 4.40 to 5 minutes for my easy bits and I, I did a test of just like breathing through my nose when I was running and I can go quite a long way at that sort of pace breathing through my nose so I kind of figured out I can't be going that hard and I always feel like I can go way faster than that but should I be going slower than that or not? Well, to be honest, I've had a look and I already... I was going to say I was going to congratulate you on going as easy as you have been because a lot of people end up going a lot faster than they should. And going by kind of your, well, what I can sort of semi-predict is your threshold pace, you're, you're kind of in the right ballpark. You could probably do a keeping it around the five minute per K pace, mm -hmm. but you are a fit chap. You're doing very well. So like five minute per K is, you know, that should be Good fine okay. for you. And as you say, you can breathe through your nose. You're feeling relaxed. The main thing you've got to factor in is are you feeling in, good shape and recovered for those hard intervals and hard day. workouts so yeah. which i'm getting the impression you are no i do feel i mean i never go out and feel too sluggish i think there was, might have been one i think it might have been last weekend's the end of the first week when i did the 12k i think the first three or four i felt a bit sluggish but then i got better towards the end anyway but the other thing that i found is that most of my runs historically have been quite short under 10ks uh, every single run i've done so far that have been over 10ks of which I've been, I think there have been three at this point, I've had to stop to go for a number two at the Hopefully side of the road, discreetly. despite the fact that I'd already been for number two just before I went out each and every time because I was worried about that. And so I'm really starting to fear the fact that I've got in 21 Ks at some point and, I'm, and I don't really want to stop because I've got a time in mind to start with, but also because I don't want anyone to see me. Well, you'll probably be pleased to hear you. you're certainly not alone. There's a lot of pros out there that still struggle this on a daily basis, and myself included. Um, now, obviously, the first protocol, and we mentioned this in the last video, is your nutrition yeah. and making sure that you are having a big or a heavier meal at least two to three hours before you head out, which I think you are. Um, well, I have, well, kind of. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't some days. Okay. Like, even just the run we just did then, I had lunch about an hour before we went, yeah. so. Yeah, um, and then, then it's also just looking, if you're struggling to pinpoint it then, it's then maybe doing a week-long nutrition diary and just tracking everything you're eating, whether that's you know maybe a coffee, maybe that might be the trigger, just yeah. the hour or so before, um, dairy, the timing of your food. So being able to then notice those, uh, I guess, 
those frequencies or rhythms in what you're eating and when you're training, yeah. that's, that's probably the next point. I must, yeah, yeah, I've started to feel, understand what Tom de Moulin felt like at the Giro. When, <laughs> for those of you who don't watch cycling, he was a rider leading the Giro d'Italia, one of the biggest races in the world, and he had to stop before one of the key mountains on a key stage. And I just used to think it, why don't you just hold it in? It can't be that yeah, hard. And but it, <laughs> my, my got to the point where I can't either. My final point, really, and I wouldn't. I'm not someone that prescribes drugs or says, you know, tell you to pop pills, but. A lot of pros do actually use Imodium, which is basically used to help prevent the effects of diarrhea. So, well, I um, might try that before. I, I want to try it before one of the long runs in training, before I get to the actual. Yeah, so marathon. it's not something I'd say go and do in all your running sessions because you definitely don't want to be taking um, Imodium on every run. Mm. Yeah, well, serious issues then, but every <laughs> once in a while, like so, maybe yeah, try it out in one of your long training runs, and then perhaps if it works, you can use it in the race. Yeah. So. I mean, if I used it before every run, there might be a massive explosion come the race day. <laughs> 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 but now I, actually, I want to move on now to talk about the plan again. So we're obviously, we're three weeks in, you're doing a fantastic job. I have actually put, and this is for the viewers as well, on the fourth week, there is an option of an easy week. Now, do you feel like you need that? I, no, honestly, like I don't, apart from that one run I talked about just now where I felt a little bit sluggish at the start, there's, there's been no day where I felt really tired or really fatigued. So, I mean, if I don't need to take it, then I don't feel like I, yeah. I need it in myself at the moment. And that's what I probably suspected. But the option is there. I mean, ordinarily in training programs, I would say every three to four weeks, take a recovery week, allows you to sort of adapt and absorb all that hard work. But because we're doing quite a condensed program mm. here, it's nine weeks. Theoretically, you shouldn't really need to. We, we should be able to plow on through and make the most of every week. So I think we'll do that. But if you are struggling, there's no shame in taking an easier week yeah. now to adapt. And One last thing uh, before we finish is that I found that the days that I do feel worst are after a rest day. And that was something that I had as a cyclist as well. Like the day before a big race, I'd always do something quite hard actually and have a rest day before that. And I noticed we have got that um, in the plan the day before the half marathon distance, but I'm definitely going to have a few openers that day. Yeah, and then that's, that's a really good point actually. So yeah, what a lot of people find is when they take a recovery week or an easy day, it's almost like their body catches up with them. And I often liken this to when you're at school and you're doing exams and then you finish exams and then you get ill. And that's quite often your body, I, this, this is, there's no science here coming from uh, you, but your body almost just gives in and goes, oh, thank God you've let so off. Yeah, and, it goes into repair mode. Yeah, think, it? and you can quite often feel quite lethargic. So um, that's, that's totally fine, it's, it's quite common. So that's, yeah, on the day before the half marathon, you may want to just do some yeah. uh, little interval, very short, just to open up the legs and keep you kind of cool. fired up. Um, going back to the pace, etc. cetera, um, now, as we go into well, this next block, the next three weeks, you're actually going to go to sort of your peak volume mm. in the program, um, and also actually covering your longest run prior to the half marathon, which is nearing on a half marathon itself. Mm. So it is really important you do stick to that easy pace okay. and making sure that you're not detracting from those harder sessions. Right. So yeah, make sure you stay on that because that's uh, that's key. Will do. Will do. <laughs> but yeah, brilliant work, Ken. So do keep it up. So yeah, thanks ever so much to everyone for tuning in, and please. Do follow the plan if you'd like to. You can find that in the description just down below. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and don't forget to give us a follow over on social media or subscribe just down below.